Can you say hi to him on the tape? Say hi to everybody. Say hi to Grandma and Grandpa. I want to see them. Hmm? I want to see my toy room. Let me see it again. Let you see it again. Yeah. Is this a pretty cool cabin? Oh, you're videotaping your pop tart. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. You like your good pop tart, huh? Yeah. Okay. Where are we going this morning? Sit down, Tay Tay. Sit down, Tay Tay. I'll tell you how tough I am. Yeah. I can eat everything on the plate. That's how tough I am. I don't leave a thing. I'm tough. Now that's tough. Some. Some people, they're not very strong and tough, and they just pick, 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 pick. Not me. I eat it all. I chew it up, my tough teeth. Yeah. You look like a tough back to follow. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you. Whoever beats is who's the toughest. He's easy. Carrot. Oh, I'm catching my. I need to slip by. <laughs> Shoot. Where's your glass in? Now you got a little bit of a beard. <laughs> Let me see, Jakey. Oh, he wiped it off. Skim milk don't set up just as good as the whole milk. Well, yes. I'm gonna play train. I like. I'm gonna play train. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Where are we at, Jake? No, we would. That's right. Caleb, where are you at? Lauren's bus driver still calls her Dollywood. Say Dollywood. Because it's a little thing, Lauren, I know which one's here. I'm going to get back in Dollywood. I saw one digging in the day. Dollywood! You say it's big in Dollywood. It's really good. It's really good. Jake takes the train. I don't really read it. Hi, KK. <coughs> <laughs> I want to hear you. Mr. Craig, I'll tell you about the Pencil Parker guy. He's mighty fine. I also work on the letters you got, Gail, on the auditorium. You go there and those ladies will dress you up all pretty and take your picture. Also, come and come on. I can't hear you. Like I said, this is a good opportunity for you to take a picture of him. My cousin, 
Eddie. Eddie, yeah. Because <laughs> Eddie. You see, with these clever disguises, they will get right in the middle of the herd. And we heard the herd talking, too. Now, wait a minute. He goes, I ride train. Shoot, can I see what time it is?
more. chicken, a vulture, and a hawk. Her kind is found down in southern Florida, Texas, Arizona, into South America. It's been called the Mexican eagle or the Mexican chicken. This spends a lot of its time on the ground walking. Looking much like a chicken, or scratches, searching under rocks and logs looking for something to eat. Hopefully Benito will come out and demonstrate some scratching behavior for you, although we're never really exactly sure what she's going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the National Bird of Mexico, Crested Cara Cara. Here comes the leader. <laughs> Off stage, we have some bark. Under the bark, we have some food. In the wild, she was searching her bark, rocks, rotten logs, looking for insects, grubs, lizards, small mammals, anything else you might deem medical, including carrion. And notice while she's out here, Benita has a pretty cool hairdo. Looks like she's dressed for a night on the town, and she has legs resembling those of a lanky supermodel. When she's finished, she says, adios. Hasta vista. Let's give her a round of applause, too. Okay, let's go back over here to this tree, because in this tree there's a small owl named Frankie, and he isn't in there right now. What does an owl sound like? Who? Okay, TJ. Frankie's strange. He doesn't come out to a who. He comes out to a Tarzan yell. <laughs> Let me refresh everybody's memory. Ready? Okay, I'm going to count to three. 
three, I want you to step up here to my poison ivy vine. When I count to three, you do your best Tarzan, y'all. We'll see if we can get him to wake up. Ready? One, two, three! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Ready? I'll count to three. Pull the door knocker a couple times. Ring the doorbell a couple times and yell, Hey, Frankie in here. We'll see if we can wake him up. One, two, three! Frankie! It worked. Here he comes. Okay, I'm going to let you do something you couldn't do in the wild very gently. Feel how soft his feathers are. TJ, you did a great job up here. I want you to have this button. You're an owl pal. Let's give him a big hand for coming up here. Thank you, TJ. This is Frankie, and Frankie is an Eastern Screech Owl. And this owl coming out from behind us now is Barry. Barry is a barred owl. B-A-R-R-E-D, barred. He's named for the bars on his chest. Barred owls and screech owls can be found throughout North America, and at times they can be found in the same habitat. Owls share many common characteristics. Their nighttime vision can be up to 100 times better than ours. This enables them to maneuver and catch prey in very low light. Second, their hearing is excellent. For example, if Frankie were sitting in a tree at the edge of a field, he can hear a mouse running a quarter of a mile away. And without ever seeing that mouse, he can fly over and catch it. Owls can fly silently too. This enables them to be straight ahead. They also had 14 vertebrae in the back of their neck when we only have seven. The screech owl is misnamed, and it doesn't really screech at all, but makes more of a wavering whistle that goes like... The barn yeah, owl is a little yeah, different. Yeah. I think you have too much science medication on it. That was a great horned cow. It's <laughs> great horned owl. Sorry. The great horned owl. Now the barn owl's call is a little different, and John's going to do that for you. <laughs> the barred owl has many calls, and it's responsible for one of the scariest calls you'll ever hear in the night woods. So scary, in fact, it may inspire you to run until you hit a large, solid object, like a tree or a ghost owl, monkey faced owl, and a ghost owl. Coming out from behind you now is Valentine. Valentine is our three-year-old male barn owl, hatched and raised in captivity. The barn owl gets its name from the fact that it likes to live in barns, but it will also nest in a matter of other man-made structures like abandoned buildings, warehouses, and silos. And if you wish, you can build nest boxes to attract this bird to your property. We have plans at the side of the stage you can pick up after the show. The barn owl has the reputation of being one of the best mouse catchers in the world. While most owls hunt while sitting still, the barn owl can be flying over a field, locate and catch a mouse without ever seeing it. Recent scientific studies have suggested that the barn owl's hearing is very much like sonar and that it actually gets an image from the sound it receives. Now that's impressive. Let's give Athena a hand, or Valentine. Not your hand, John. Now these next birds have some image problems. Some people say they're ugly. Others say they help spread they spread disease and others say that they're very stupid. None of this is true. They're very graceful and beautiful when they're soaring. They do help produce diseases that are spread by flies. And they're also some of the smartest birds you'll see here today. They learn very quickly and on many occasions have even outsmarted us. They've been commonly called buzzards, correctly called vultures. Ladies and gentlemen, the cool and sophisticated Mr. George.
because although he looks like a crow that's been on a diet of steroids and jumping beans, he's actually a black vulture. Buzz was found as a youngster as he wandered down a horse trail. People found Buzz, thought he'd been abandoned by his parents, so they took him home and hand raised him. Actually, what we happened with Buzz is something that's not uncommon with young black vultures. Black vultures generally nest on the ground. Their young are very curious. And once they reach a certain age, after they hatch, you can walk around and explore their world. They will do so. The parents will go find food for them. They always manage to get back together. Buzz just took a wrong turn. Black vultures don't have the same sense of smell that turkey vultures do. To get around this, they'll follow turkey vultures. They see them fly down the woods and feed on something dead. They'll follow in behind them and being more aggressive, they scare turkey vultures away from the dead animal to eat until they get their fill. Vultures have been blessed with a very unique defense system. It's called Team Position. Thank you, Shannon. 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 I was kidding. <laughs> Shannon, let's go down these stairs here. <laughs> okay. All the way down the stairs, what I need you to do now, Shannon, is stop, put your left arm in the glove, and pull up toward your shoulder. It's okay if your fingers stick out, because those are snacks for butts. All right, Shannon, drop your arm down to your side, keep it there, let's go this way. Shannon, what we're going to do, you're going to top this little incline, we'll extend your arm off to this side. Buzz will come over here, land on your arm, as simple as that. Are you ready? All right, got your arm up. All right, here it comes. Okay, Shannon, let's start walking back towards the stage. All right, should fly back up there. Should have the keyboard. Maybe Chase Karen might have the stage right here. All right. Now, Shannon, before you go, I have something for you. A pen that tells the world exactly what you've become. That is, Vulture AD believe that he is a golden eagle, too. Much like that little chicken hawk in the cartoons. What he lacks in size, he makes up for with his ambition. And now, Sam, let's see if you can get him in here. Right over there. of Harris's hawk. Harris's hawks are native to the desert southwest down to South America. Life in the desert at best is harsh. The Harris's hawk has overcome the difficulties of its environment through cooperation. Much like wolves, these birds hunt in groups. Sometimes from three to seven, this allows them to catch prey much larger than themselves, including rabbits and other prey that they'll share among them. <laughs> Even with you approved batteries, nothing's faster than my game. Thank you for that sort of matter. Clean fur such as a coon skin cap, rascal raccoon animal, or a very bad toupee. Please <laughs> buy these items. People check their heads here. And those are dog gear. Let's make sure he's out of sight on this one. Okay. Any more dogs need to be put out of sight too, because this bird may see it and go, ah, dog. It's a bird you've commonly seen beside highways and interstates, especially during the fall and winter. Many people like to count it as they sit sitting in trees. Major look. Do you get a picture there? <laughs> Sometimes called a chicken hawk. Very rarely does it eat chickens. It's more of a rodent eater, correctly called a red tailed hawk. This is Satch. Satch's job, once I get his attention, is to rearrange a few hairstyles. <laughs> Satch is now 18 years old. Taking out his nest by a man illegally selling birds of prey. The fellow locate hawking out nests, climb up and take the young out. He then hand raise those young and find someone to buy. The fellow made over 10,000 tax free dollars selling birds of prey. The last person he sold a bird to was an undercover agent with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Closed down the man's illegal operation, Sachs was then used for evidence and turned over to me. We've been together now for 18 years and went in with a bird that long and thinks he's a human, some interesting things happen. Sachs thinks that I'm his mate. This time of year is pretty weird for us. The term hawk, guys, is very apt. If Sachs could read, he could read a newspaper headline from a half a mile to a mile away. So these birds have truly phenomenal vision. No two red-tailed hawks are exactly alike either. In the same part of the country, you'll see them marked in a similar fashion. Within that region, there's individually marked as our fingerprints. Sachs is what you typically see in Mississippi as diverse chicks. The red-tailed hawk is doing quite well. 
Across North America, and maybe more than a million of these birds. Like other birds of prey, young red tail hawks have had a difficult time surviving their first year. Some young birds of prey won't even learn how to hunt, simply starve to death. Many will injure themselves in pursuit of prey. They'll hit trees and hit the ground. they will get stream closer to prey, too. There you go. <laughs> Also, a lot of collision with human-made objects, such as power lines, power poles, windows, radio towers, barbed wire fences, get hit by cars and trucks, sometimes or even electric. Introduce you to Tecumseh, a 19-year-old male golden eagle hatched and raised in captivity. The golden eagle gets its name from the golden feathers on the back of its neck. It is found throughout the northern hemisphere from lonely mountain peaks to arid valleys. In the United States, it is primarily a bird of the West. The golden eagle is the master of its environment. It embodies the definition of magnificent. A powerful flyer that seems to delight in soaring strong gale force winds. It's been known to climb thermal updrafts higher than four miles. And in a dive, it may achieve speeds approaching 200 miles per hour or more. It is cunning, intelligent, and bold. When pursuing prey, it may dive out of the sun or use stealth tactics to surprise its quarry out in the open and cutting off its escape. The golden eagle possesses a grace and grandeur no other bird can match. This fact has not gone unnoticed by humans. The Native Americans of the Great Plains have long revered the spotted eagle. Brave deeds have been rewarded with a blue feather from an eagle, and the flowing headdress of a chief represents a lifetime of valor. Also important in their religion, it is believed that prayers are carried to the Great Spirit on the wings of eagles. The Golden Eagle, likewise, has been important in Judeo-Christian beliefs, as it has been referred to many times in both the Old and New Testaments. Throughout human history, eagles have impressed cultures around the world. The final bird you will see here today was a symbol of a once mighty nation, the Iroquois. Today, it's the national bird of a much younger country, and John will be right out to tell you more. But for now, a round of applause for this magnificent... Thank you. This is Osceola. Osceola is an 18-year-old male, shot 16 years ago. His left wing had been severely damaged and required amputation. He also saved his life. Hard to believe anyone would be cool enough to shoot such a beautiful bird. The federal law makes it illegal to kill any bird. that rope? Caleb, no. Caleb!
Did he ride that? Did he do that? Did he do that rope? How'd he do?
Jakey, is you awake? 